Hi there, I'm Anna with VSAC, and I'm here today talking with Patrick Ross about his career. I'm going to turn it over to him. Morning. I'm going to play a fiddle tune that my dad taught me when I was seven years old. His dad taught him, and his dad taught him, and his dad taught him, and his dad taught him. So I'm a fifth generation fiddle player, and this tune. Hmm is called Liberty. So that's where it all started, uh, learning from my dad, who taught me by ear. So he was a fiddle player, uh, kind of weekend warrior. And then <clears throat> during the week, he was a welder. And he would always expose me to, to music. So I grew up listening to that kind of music and then eventually picked up on it. But <clears throat> when I first started playing, I, I wasn't big enough to play guitar, but I wanted to play guitar. So I was big enough at seven to play the fiddle. And so I was like, all right, cool, sure. But now fast forward uh, 30 years, I'm 38 years old, and uh, an ocean of time and music in between. Now, this is a song that I, I wrote yesterday mm. called Sugar Shack. Uh, my wife and I have a, a six-year-old daughter, and someone once told me to write about what I know, and I know at least somewhat what it's like to be a dad and a husband and a musician. It's called Sugar Shack. Mama's in the kitchen making bacon pancakes. Papa's in the tool shed working on lines. Sugar shack steaming like an old iron train. Everybody's just pulling their weight. She's living off the land, tapping old growth trees. Got 57 ways to skin those knees. The rain done come, so we take a little nap. Now the sun is shining, we're on our way. She thinks it's right. Oh, Ophelia, gonna have as much fun as she can tonight. Party at the shack when the work day's done. We dance in our boots when we got a good run. The sparks are flying and the steam is sweet. The fiddler's cranking and we're swinging to the beat. Oh, Ophelia, she thinks is right. Oh, Ophelia, gonna have as much fun as she can tonight. The old dump truck doesn't have any doors. They got torn off in the Second World War with duct tape wire and a little bit of luck. She's learning how to get unstuck. Muddy boots, flannel, and a well-worn hat. Life doesn't get much better than that. You do what we can with what 
My daughter's name is Ophelia, in case you didn't get that. And uh, I've, I've got a pile of songs here in this manila folder that I've written this summer, which has been a, a, a lifelong dream of mine, being a fiddle player and an instrumentalist. It was always something that I was always sort of helping musicians who were singing and writing songs. I was supporting them. And uh, it just took a long time for, for things to kind of cultivate for me to be able to like sit down and, and combine melody with uh, lyrics. But happy to be here and ready to answer any questions you might have about this career. That's great. Um, well, thank you so much for being here. Um, I think you've talked a little bit about this, but can you tell us a little bit more about what your job entails? You know, what sure. the bigger picture of it is? Time management. <laughs> That's my job. Uh, but more specifically, I teach private lessons mm -hmm. as my day job. And I have approximately 70 different uh, people who I coach. I often refer to myself as a coach instead of a teacher. And uh, then on the weekends, I, I do concerts and lots of different events from private events, whether it's birthday parties, backyard barbecues, corporate events, uh, you know, company parties or weddings, um, uh, town hall concert series and, and uh, things like that. Of course, not as many during this COVID situation, but uh, we can probably talk about that a little bit as you might want to a little bit later. But uh, that's my career is, is being a musician and uh, trying to balance, you know, being a dad, husband, uh, my music career, and the other things that I like to do in life that are not music related, mm -hmm. which are really important. Mm -hmm. Great. Um, you talked about, you know, learning from your father. Can you tell us a little bit more about your educational background and sort of how you came into this line of work? Sure. My educational background mm -hmm. is such that it is not a formal education mm -hmm. um, by any stretch. So more of the, the blue collar, you know, um, uh, learning music in what is known as the rote method mm -hmm. in that it's more uh, learning by ear. Mm -hmm. And so my dad was a tradesman, a welder, and what I observed was that music to him was a method of, of, I guess you could say coping with life, but also just a way to like let, let steam off and just kind of look forward to the weekend so that he could do the things that he liked to do other than work. Mm -hmm. And so when I saw my father in particular in that mode, it it really attracted me because I could see that there was something more to music than, than just playing notes. You know, there was something that, that was uh, therapeutic and, and, and enjoyable on a deeper level. And so that's what attracted me to it. And uh, as far as my educational background goes, I think it was really just me um, <laughs> using whatever smarts that I had and the re resources that I had available to me, including my father and his network of musician friends. And so, mm -hmm. There were different musicians and different characters and different personalities and i was able to gravitate toward the people that i resonated with most and that's how i learned most of my music though uh, my father did encourage me to quote read the notes mm -hmm. and there were music teachers at canaan high school or canaan schools where i grew up in, in canaan vermont uh, who kind of took me under their wing and showed me some of the the theoretical musical aspects which to this day have have helped me immensely but I, you know, as far as fast forwarding to and through higher education, I chose to do more of an apprenticeship route 
<laughs> so even that wasn't formal. I moved to Nashville instead of accepting the Berkeley scholarship um, the, to the Berkeley School of Music in Boston. <laughs> I went down and looked at it and I had a, a, a decent scholarship. It wasn't a full ride. And uh, something about, you know, I, I had a choice. My mother helped me choose and she, she kind of let me have the, the final say. And uh, I moved to Nashville and just kind of uh, picked up a job working as a musician and uh, ate rice and beans for almost four years and practiced day and night till my fingers bled, which is probably what I would have been doing in, in college anyway. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, and then I'd be happy to answer more questions about that decision process and what it has yielded for me. Of course, I didn't go to college, so I can't compare. Right. Mm -hmm. hmm. That's great. Um, what would you say are some of your favorite things about your work? Being self-employed mm -hmm. allows me freedom mm -hmm. to, to make my own schedule. And uh, I think that's one of my favorite things. I, I don't have to answer to a particular boss, right? Which I, I never kind of really did well with anyway. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> so that and also the, the wide variety of, of people that I coach. Mm -hmm. So the youngest student that I have is now six and the eldest is 73 mm -hmm. and everybody has a, just a different background a different strengths um different uh, abilities interests and so that is is what keeps things interesting for me because i don't it's not just the same thing showing up mm -hmm. to it uh, you know a type of desk job per se, though a fair amount of my work is administrative work mm -hmm. and uh, organizing things like that. But I'd say, you know, working with the variety of people and, and that dance, often I often refer to it as a chess game. You know, it's like, okay, this person had a bad day. How can I, how can I bring something to the table that's not going to just make them walk away, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? So, yeah. Hmm. That's interesting. Um, what are some of the things that you find the most challenging? Well, I would say the first thing that comes to mind is, is as a parent, the answer would be uh, how to schedule time with my family, in particular my daughter, mm -hmm. just because of the, the work schedule. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, the after school hours, because two thirds of my clientele are in school mm -hmm. and so those after school hours are they get grabbed up pretty quick and so my weekly work schedule is from noon to eight mm -hmm. she comes home from school and i'm working and i work and she's in bed by the time i'm done mm -hmm. and so we get about an hour in the morning and then you know these days because concerts and live performance is virtually non-existent so we've had an, an amazing summer, <laughs> like mm. despite, you know, COVID-19 and people who are suffering from the pandemic, you know, thankfully we have, we've actually flourished in some ways just because I had my weekends back, whereas mm. I'd be teaching during the week and then working on the weekends. And then, you know, so that's one of the hardest things is, is how to, to balance that work, family, life, Mm -hmm. Makes sense. Um, you sort of talked about this with your hours, but could you talk a little bit more about what a typical day looks like for you? Sure. Well, it's different in the summer mm -hmm. than it is during the school year, largely because of our daughter, Ophelia. Mm -hmm. um, and so right now we're in the school year, early fall. And so I get a little bit more time to myself now, which is, you know, it's, it is what it is. So in the morning, I get up, uh, I help out with morning stuff, getting her ready for school. My wife's out the door. She works three days a week at an organic farm down the road. And so I have an hour with Ophelia, and we just, a lot of the time is, is uh, playing piano because she takes piano lessons. And, and I kind of, you know, I'm musically inclined, and so I can kind of make it sound okay. And we just sing songs, make up songs, and uh, 
then I walk her to school, which is just across the street. And then I take the dog and we go up. Uh, there's a trailhead just, you know, a thousand feet from here. I hike up. It's a 10 minute hike up. There's a view of the river valley. And I take some time to just kind of do some physical stretches um, because repetitive motion is an issue with playing instruments. Mm. As I'm, you know, approaching 40 years old and I've played, I'm in the 10,000 hour club and then some, mm. probably approaching 20,000 hours of mm. physically playing instruments. I don't know, I haven't counted, but mm. there's the repetitive motion of just wearing out joints and shoulders stuff. And that combined with living a, a very, uh, sportive lifestyle and and skiing and just you know bouncing off trees and breaking mm -hmm. bones and stuff like that so i do yoga at the top of the mountain mm -hmm. and then i come back and then um i i block out 30 minutes of songwriting every morning and then i have breakfast and then i work on administrative stuff and then i start at noon there's probably somewhere in there in the morning there's some house chores that i should get done uh, and then I teach lessons, and then at the end of the day, um, I'll read, go to bed. Hmm. That's great. Thanks. Um, what do you think would make someone a good fit for this kind of work? Well, um, there, there's a, uh, what is it? nature and nurture come to mind mm. and so in my line of work I, I can i can usually tell pretty quickly when people have a natural ability for music mm -hmm. right and then there's the nurture part right to nurture something is like well they don't you know you you just teach it and you nurture it and you and you offer things and you just kind of you know it's like sun light and water for plants that kind of nurturing right um, so if somebody has a natural ability for for music then that's an advantage for sure hands down but at the, on the same token you know i know i work with some some students or clients who they have some natural ability but they have desire and they have uh, drive and they have grit and they're open to the nurturing part mm -hmm. and people who are open and who want to learn that counts for as much if not more than the natural ability because you can have somebody who has natural ability and who doesn't give it darn mm -hmm. um but then you can have somebody who has a little bit of natural ability who's open to learning and who wants something through whatever like why i don't you know but then mm -hmm. that combination is pretty powerful if there's no natural ability at all whatsoever that's tricky mm -hmm. that that's where i would encourage people to go into more of the like the business management music management or or like music law or something like that mm -hmm. i mean mm -hmm. i'm kind of speaking off uh mm -hmm. off the cuff here but you know mm -hmm. so yeah right music adjacent Stuff. that makes sense yeah um if there's a student who is interested in this kind of work you know like being a musician or doing um musical coaching are there things you would recommend that they do right now um to kind of start exploring that like classes or clubs or part-time jobs or anything like that yeah so uh just to kind of take a step back in and how mm -hmm. like right now the musical coaching is a big part and it's my day job and it encompasses more hours in a week than the performance side. Mm -hmm. However, um, I would say that the performance aspect and the writing and the, and the composition aspect of being a musician, it's like this, this balance the whole time. And so, um, so I'm gonna answer this question for those mm -hmm. who might wanna get into musical coaching, but also those who might wanna get into musical performance, mm -hmm. right? Um, so the coaching aspect, I would say that, you know, listen to those people who are your coaches now and learn as much as you can from not only what they're saying, but how they're saying it and how they coach in their methods of coaching. I know that I had really good athletic coaches in when I was in school, uh, particularly, well, no, it was right up elementary through middle school and high school. And so looking back, 
I was able to sort of adopt and adapt and, and, and sort of borrow uh, ideas from them and methodology that I was able to apply to my music directly, like practice, mm -hmm. like conditioning, like, you know, um, you know, cross training, all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And so as much of, of listening to what they're saying, but more like why they're saying it and, and the coaching methods. And so that, I think that would, would help a person um, as far as taking classes on coaching, you know, job shadowing, things like that are, are mm -hmm. definitely helpful. But in the performance aspect, um, there are, like you referred to earlier, like music adjacent things. Mm -hmm. In this world that we live in, it's, it's pretty much built in. If you're not learning how to do email, if you're not learning how to do Zoom, if you're not learning how to type if you're not learning about the technological aspects of this real world that we live in, then you're going to be at a slight disadvantage in some cases, a huge disadvantage. Mm -hmm. And so with the same thing, uh, the same thing applies to, to music as well. Uh, there are technological hacks or advantages that, that exist, including learning how to use multi-track recording software, uh, learning how to just record on your smartphone, mm -hmm. you know, um, learning how to use audio in a way that sort of supplements and, and integrates the music part of things. Um, you know, microphones, what's an XLR cable? What's the difference between a, a diaphragm condenser microphone and a phantom power 48 volt, things like that. You know, the, the tech side of things. Mm -hmm. that's, that's, I guess, the short answer, medium mm -hmm. long answer to that question. No, that's great. Thanks. Um, and then, so the last, Kind of formal question I have is what kind of education or training should they be thinking about down the road to help them succeed in this career? And this might be a great place too if you wanted to talk a little bit more about kind of how you decided on your pathway for um, education in Nashville. Sure. Well, you know, I, I see it again as a coach that there are those who are more academically inclined mm -hmm. and there are those who are just more like um, they, they want to see it they want to feel it they want to hold it they want you know it's that more tactile learning mm -hmm. you know instead of the 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 book like test kind of questions and uh i think to ask oneself like what kind of learner are they you know that's that's a really good place to start and it's not to say that i dismiss academic learning and you know textbook learning but i i chose to go out into the, and I'd say, I'd say the real world because mm. I didn't go to a, I, I, to me, because I didn't go to college, I didn't go to university. So again, it's hard for me to speak about what that might have been, but I have friends, lots of friends who, who are, uh, who have degrees in music and there is a type of bubble that exists in that college environment. Mm right, which is great for the person who doesn't want to get distracted, right, who, who really wants to just focus and get as much information out of you know, that university or that college or, or that tech school as possible. And, and that has a huge advantage because I would say that when I did move to Nashville, I had to create my own bubble. Mm -hmm. And that had its own challenges, mm -hmm. you know. Um, and so without getting into too much of the personal story though, I, I can say that, you mm. know, I, I did end up starting a band. I was a co-founder in a band in Nashville and uh, the school of hard knocks comes to mind, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Which, yeah, there might be some of that in college environment, university environment, depending on the professors and the teaching methodology, but it's different when, you know, you have to pay your own rent and, and, you know, you're, you're, out there and so I started this band and we uh we practiced you know we had rehearsals two or three times a week and things got to the point where we were getting national recognition from different record labels mm -hmm. Universal Studios on the left coast mm -hmm. and uh, Island Def Jam on the right coast in New York City mm -hmm. and there was mm -hmm. a bidding uh, yeah. war between the two labels to sign this band which was at the time mm -hmm. known as uh, Blue Merle 
and I was by far the youngest in the band and that came with <laughs> um, just me being inexperienced and the other guys the other three members of the band all had music degrees mm -hmm. in in business and performance mm -hmm. and so it got to the point where the band was was getting more and more recognition and about to sign a, a national like a, like a major record label mm -hmm. deal and i got fired hmm. i got cut i got you know i was mm -hmm. like what the yeah okay mm -hmm. and uh, hmm. that was something that would not have happened had i been in university in in that way and so um yeah things like that and huh. how mm -hmm. um, my education and my experience kind of taught me more about the the real life situations not mm -hmm. in theory but like mm -hmm. okay this is this is what just happened but i did get a settlement you know i got fifteen thousand mm -hmm. dollars so i went and bought a truck and a mountain bike and went to colorado and um made new friends mm -hmm. who were not musicians mm -hmm. And I think, you know, just to kind of take the answer to that a little bit further and in, in how it's shaped my life is that, you know, from when I was a kid, all the people around me, they could see that I had a natural ability mm -hmm. and they, they nurtured that. And so everybody was like, oh man, you're gonna, you know, just remember where you came from, man, because someday you're gonna be, you know, like, you're, mm -hmm. you know, I said, oh, make sure Patrick, you know, oh, don't, don't hurt your fingers, you know, oh, you know, like, mm -hmm. so all those messages from being a little kid up through high school, up till after high school, it was almost like I, I felt like I was being pushed into this career of, well, I'm gonna, this is what I'm, this is what I'm gonna do, because everybody says I'm gonna do it, mm -hmm. you know, and so a lot of my, uh, interests were music based. Mm -hmm. When I moved to Nashville, all my friends were musicians. All of us were musicians. Everything, all the conversations that I had were music based and everything. And so what happened was like, I felt like I was missing out on, on other things in life because mm -hmm. everything was music. And so when, uh, when the feathers hit the fan, so to speak, I packed everything up and I, like my brother was living in Colorado and I moved to Colorado and that was a huge uh, pivot for me because I, I still played music, but I didn't introduce myself to other people as a musician. Hmm. And so I found other interests in life, mountain biking, kayaking, skiing, fishing, um, outdoorsy stuff. And that was a great way to sort of, complement you know what music is now for me you know mm -hmm. and I, I a lot of the songs that i'm writing definitely have a, a backbone of, of outdoorsiness mm -hmm. and just you know um the inspiration that comes from things that are not music and then mm -hmm. tie music into those things right mm -hmm. so yeah, yeah I, I think i might be rambling but no that's great <laughs> i think it's, it's interesting for sure um that was my last formal question, but are there other things you would want to share with students about, about your career or your, your life? Um, students, so maybe, maybe I'll kind of flip this around a little bit. Maybe you could, um, like, what student am I speaking to mm -hmm. specifically? Yeah, so um, this is sort of intended for seventh and eighth graders, but we're going to make it available to you know, all the way high schoolers and adults too, who are thinking about careers or career changes. Um, but maybe if you wanted to speak specifically to someone who's sort of just finishing up middle school and starting to think about what they might want to do with their lives. Just finishing up middle school and thinking about what they might want to do with their lives. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. So for, for me, it's uh Can I, can I be trusted? Mm. Right. So that's a big one. Uh, my reputation is based on trust. When somebody hires me to do something and, you know, they, 
they trust that I'm going to be able to follow through with what it is that I said I'm going to do. Mm -hmm. Right. And so um, if I don't know the answer to something, I'm going to tell them that I don't know, because that was a huge learning point for me was that I just wanted, Oh yeah, sure. I'll learn. I'll figure out how to do it. I'll Google it. And then I'll be like, okay, yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, cool. And, and then that just doesn't really pan out very well usually. Mm -hmm. And so being okay with, uh, not knowing something and being honest about that. So, so trust and honesty, uh, knowing your limitations, right? Knowing when something doesn't feel right. Punctuality is huge. It's probably, I can't say it's the biggest one, but it's in the top three, like showing up on time. That's huge. I, I I could go into so many examples of, of why that's really important, but it's just huge. Um, and then time management, hmm. overall time management. I know I'm kind of answering these questions to, to the person yeah. who's just going to work, mm -hmm. but really what it comes down to is work. Mm -hmm. You know, being a musician is fun, um, but it's work. Mm -hmm. And so, learning how to work and, and learning how to learn and, and learning how to work with other people, mm. um, time management, being able to, to not become a workaholic either. Right. I think that's very, 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 very important. Uh, so, so finding a balance between work study and then your own personal things personal ho hobbies, things like that. It's, it's so important. Um, but as far as, you know, seventh and eighth graders who might want to pursue a career in music, coaching or performance. And I would say, you know, follow your heart is the cliche one, but like, how much does music mean to you? And in the other part of that is I have friends of mine who are supremely gifted musicians who don't want to make it a business, who mm -hmm. don't want to make it a career because they feel like it would crush their creative mm -hmm. essence, you know? And so music might just be that part that you carry with you because you get into banking or because you get into law mm -hmm. or because you get into medicine and then music can be that thing for you. That's on the weekends. That is the thing that you want to do with your friends when they come over or, or just have fun doing it. Mm -hmm. So um, just because you really, 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 really like something doesn't mean you should turn it into a career <laughs> because there are times where I'm like, you know, I don't want to pick up my instrument. Mm -hmm. I don't want to play because I've done six concerts in the past 10 days and I'm teaching and I've, and I've got all these responsibilities and then, you know, music becomes more of a chore. Mm -hmm. And I would say just to kind of bring everything back around to this current situation, as far mm -hmm. as, you know, making the most out of the pandemic that we're currently in came at the right time for me mm -hmm. in terms of, you know, time management and my commitments and my body, like my mm -hmm. shoulder in particular, when I found out that I, w I wasn't allowed to play concerts anymore for the foreseeable future, mm -hmm. at first I was like, oh, bummer. And then I was like, oh, you mean I, I get to go fishing? <laughs> mm -hmm. All right, yeah, awesome. Mm -hmm. You know, so I don't know if that answered any of those yeah. questions. But <laughs> That's great. One more song to wrap yeah, up? Yeah, one more song would be awesome. Let's let's end it on a song. Okay. Um, I'll sing another one about my daughter. Let me get it all set up here. I don't have all my words memorized yet because I just wrote these songs. Ah. Mm -hmm.
This one's called Mixed Matched Socks. <laughs> In out, left, right, don't forget your shoes. She stayed up last night, now she's wearing mixed match socks. I know she'll always find her way home. We do what we can, the rest is up to her, like the way we wind her up. Watch her spin around. She can make new friends along the way and know which one should stay away. Braver than a skydiver, just about to jump. She will always make us proud, even if she falls down, because she knows she'll always have a place to call home. Long walks, sunsets, camping out at midnight. Long talks, swing sets, let's go fly that purple kite. Cause we know you'll always find your way home. The hardest part for us is learning to let go of the way we wind you up. And watch you spin around. You can make new friends along the way and know which one should stay away. Braver than a skydiver, just about to jump. You will always make us proud, even if you fall down, because you know. Always have a place to call home. Why would you walk when you could run so fast? Birds fly highest when they're free. Left, right, don't forget your lunchbox. She stayed up last night. Now she's wearing mixed match socks. And I know she'll always find her way home. We do what we can. The rest is up to her. Awesome. Thank you so much. <laughs> Welcome. Really appreciate you taking the time today to talk with us. Until next time. <laughs>